Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fantasy Network. Uh, today, we're doing it. We are going to do a full trilogy review of Blood and Bone, which is a time of dread, a time of blood, and a time of courage by John Gwynn. John Gwynn's one of my favorite authors in the world, and I have just mm, really enjoyed getting back into the Banished Lands, and it's a little bit bittersweet knowing that it's all over, but I wanted to give my thoughts in a review. I did review book one already as a spoiler-free review, and I was very cautious about recommending people watch that if you had not read the Faithful and the Fallen series. I'm going to do a much better job here of not including many character names because I feel like this is a good review for people to read if you have read Faithful and the Fallen or even if you haven't and kind of give you a better idea of what's being offered here in this trilogy, what the strengths are compared to the first series. So if you haven't read Faithful and the Fallen, I believe that you will be okay to watch this review, whereas my book one, not so much. I am going to talk way more about book two and three here since I already did a book one review, but uh, I will give overall thoughts on the trilogy as a whole. So I just want to say I thought A Time of Blood and A Time of Courage kind of felt like one, really the whole series, the whole trilogy almost feels like one book. Like it could have been printed front to back as one book and been a tome and I would have been fine with it, which is really cool. And the pacing continues right out of book one into book two and then also into book three as being some of the best. But I actually think the pacing in book two was much better than book one. And then it was even better in book three. I actually think that the extended length of book three offers it is about, I think it was like 100, maybe 150 pages more than the other book. I, I'd have to look at the page count. But book three is the biggest. And I found myself wishing because we had a lot of like down character moments to get kind of intimate with them. I felt like maybe book one could have used more of that. Book two did have more, but really all of these books could have been longer. But, you know, John Gwynn is, is very efficient with his pages in, in our time. And in book one, if you watch my review, I said, I, I said, I hope we get an antagonist POV because Gwynn did that in his first series and I thought it was excellent. And I was right. We do. We get an antagonist POV. Actually, we get two of them. And one of them, which I won't mention the name because I don't want to give anything away, is in my opinion, Gwynn's it's really close. Um, it's really close to some of the antagonists that we had in the first series, but I think this is probably, as far as being well-rounded and not just being evil, I think this is Gwyn's best work for an antagonist. And more best of Gwyn don't stop just at the antagonist POV, but some of the twists and turns in this series, in my opinion, have been his best. I think that book three stands out, Time of Courage stands out as Gwyn's best work. I think the twist and the turns and the dives and all this crazy stuff in book two, actually, in Time of Blood, are the best in the whole series, uh, even including the first one. So Gwen definitely uh, reached new accolades with me as a reader in Of Blood and Bone. And some of the dips and, and, you know, the turns and the swerves, some of them I saw coming. There was like one or two that I didn't. And even the ones that I saw coming were so logical and well you know well placed and thought out that i still enjoyed them you don't always have to be surprised and in my opinion predictables are not always a bad thing but those twists and turns are nothing if the characters aren't amazing and i've been telling i've been yelling it from the tops of the roof of the castles and the keeps that john gwen's characters uh while we talk about his combat are his strongest suits and the distinction between all of the characters and who they are and the little nuances are really what makes this series his best work and it's because of, of those characters that these twists, swerves, and dives, and all this crazy stuff, and uh, just the emotional moments, that's why these sh scenes shine, you know, they shine like a bright star even, you might say. I'll show myself how. And I kind of want to touch on characters for a moment and kind of give my opinion uh, on a specific character, and I feel like uh, John wrote a certain character, and I can say his name, it's Drem. Drem has obvious signs of something going on. Uh, I think it's representation for autism in the text. I, if I'm wrong, someone please correct me. Uh, but I kind of felt like that's what I was getting from Drem, a representation uh, you know, of an autistic character in a world full of heroes and villains and good and bad. And this is something that we haven't seen a lot in the fantasy genre or you know, really in the grand scheme of fiction. So for John Gwynn to take that up and to show that representation in the story goes a, a million miles with me. Because as a genre and as a world, as we grow, and we become more encompassing with our works of art, I think it's very important to show that anyone can be a hero, that anyone can step up, that anyone can make a difference. And for our genre of fantasy, 
and our fantasy, you know, the love we have for this genre, for us to go to the next level because we want more people to read fantasy. We want more people to feel at home with us. I think that this, this is the prime example of the steps that we have to take and that authors have to take to make this a better genre and to, to really take it to the next level. So the characterization of Drem is just, I mean, immaculate. It, one of my favorite characters of all time in all of fantasy. And to see it just so accurately represented and to say, hey, you know, anyone can take that stand. It's awesome. Awesome work. And Drem is a phenomenal good guy, right? A phenomenal protagonist. But I also just want to say that I think Gwen writes some of my favorite like not just like the main antagonist but just the evil that is in the banished lands i would never live here like it is so awful <laughs> like it takes a really brave soul to live in the banished lands and that's because the evil that is written in the story is so uh just deep and very riveting and when i read it it really gets my blood going i mean i think some of the scenes and and some of the bad things that happen here, like Border on the Line of Horror, which I'm a huge fan of. I also said this about Evan Winter, specifically in The Fires of Vengeance. And I think with uh, the Katoshim here, like, is it Katoshim or Katoshim? Someone let me know. But I think with that, it, 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 again, it kind of transcends just being bad, right? I mean, it's downright terrifying. And I like when we kind of edge, uh, you know, on the border of fantasy and horror. I think that's really cool. And I love that John Gwen said, you know what, I'm not ashamed to write what got us here to the dances, the fantasy genre. Uh, Robin Hobb even, uh, I believe, uh, endorsed the book and on the back just said, like, well, what reminds me of what I fell in love with fantasy for. And that's how I feel when I read John Gwen. I think Robin Hobb nailed it with that endorsement because he's not afraid to write good versus evil. And then he rounds out the good versus evil with, you know, nuanced characters and, you know, some of them would be considered gray is what we say. But at the heart of it, this is good versus evil. And some people might have to wait a little bit to pay for their crimes, but it always comes down to doing what's right and knowing who is on the right side of history in the Vanished Lands. This just feels like, you know, if you've read The Faith of Fire or you haven't, what this is, this feels like the blockbuster that's cashing in on all of the hard work that John put into the lore and history of this world, the world building that he did. And, you know, even, you know, what was done in the first series is now considered history, right? So it's just really amazing that you can come back with a sequel. It be bigger and better than the first in a lot of ways. Some ways, not so much. And I'll talk about it in a second. But it, this is just the blockbuster. And you just wonder how he could ever top the final battle that you have in Wrath. And he did it here. And because the first series was set up so well, and then, you know, with this taking a place 100 years later, I'll be honest, you know, I'll make some comparisons in this video from the first uh, quartet compared to here in the trilogy. But really, this is a seven book series. You could read them all through, and it would make cohesive sense, and it's very tightly knit. And that's how I now view this. I view this as the Banished Land Saga. I don't view this as the Faithful and the Fallen and of Blood and Bone. Even though, I, again, I will draw some comparisons here and there, I view this as a seven-book series. And I love the fact that in Of Blood and Bone, if it's been a while, he does provide a lot of context back to the lore. Um, if I had any complaints, I guess, about this, is that sometimes, especially with things that are encompassed and encapsulated to this series that maybe happened in book one, sometimes we'd get reminders, which is great because if there's years in between a book, but me binging it, some of the callbacks are a little too on the nose. I like to figure things out. A year ago, I was not like that, but as I've grown as a reader, I kind of like getting a little bit of a longer leash uh, from the author as the reader. Uh, so I guess if I had one kind of critique, it would be that. And also, I wish the books <laughs> were longer because I just want more of the content. But I don't think that's necessarily a, uh, a, a blanket statement to say that that's a con because a lot of the lore uh, details and reminders that we got back from the first series uh, went a long way with me because I had forgot some stuff, to be honest with you. So... That was awesome, and I think a lot of people will appreciate that, especially if they take time in between the books. And can I just say that John Gwen, not, not only does he write phenomenal endings to his books, but he, the man knows how to end a chapter so perfectly where I can like see this being adapted, and I could imagine like episodes or seasons being cut off at that point. Uh, this would be so easily adaptable. I don't. Someone's got to do it. Maybe do it, you know, animated wise. I don't. I don't care. Just somebody adapt it because the way he ends chapters, it feels like he was almost considering episodes of a TV show, and the endings of the chapters in the books. Like I said, they're just phenomenal, and he's one of the best to do it when it comes to wrapping up stuff. The final battle here. I mean, 
whew, I thought Wrath's final battle was just amazing. And this tops it. I, I think a time of courage, it, the final battle here, it wraps up all the emotions. I mean, you even feel stuff that happened back in the first series and it's just streamlined and it feels gritty, it feels real, and there's those big emotional moments that are fist pumping, heart wrenching, and it comes all to a very nice conclusion. I think this actually wrapped up a little bit better than Wrath and the fact of the pacing. I thought it was just um, as good as it gets when it comes to a fast paced, you know, combat filled novel uh, while also delivering on all the character moments. Can you tell I like, like this series? Because I really enjoyed this trilogy. I just want to go back. The final battle scene is not just the best in this series it's the best i've ever read the amount of foresight that john had to have in his head to paint this and to think about the strategies and think about the settings while also considering giving every character a payoff and uh, figuring out exactly where the positioning was going into uh, of those characters to interact with one another i mean it just had to have taken so much planning and then for it all to come together and none of it to feel clunky or awkward is an achievement in itself and then with that it's just thrilling to read it, it was just so damn captivating and it was like the thrills and the kills all wrapped up in a blanket of just heartbreak <laughs> and if i had to make some comparisons here just to kind of like wrap up all my thoughts i just i think that the faithful and the fallen I think the characters are dead even with a Blood and Bone trilogy. Um, if we're going to separate them and just take a step back and look at it like this. I like the main plot of, of Blood and Bone more. I like the Faithful and Fall side characters plots more. I think there were a little bit... I mean, I think there's more POVs in the Faithful and the Fallen. I wish that we had gotten more POVs in of Blood and Bone just because John Gwen writes multiple POVs very well. And it's very easy to track... And some of the side adventures and we'll call them side quests in The Faithful and the Fallen really made the book for me. Like Maquin, just in general, I mean, one of the best characters in the series, um, you know, could definitely be number one or two for sure. And I kind of wish we had had that here, but I love the mystery of, of Blood and Bone Trilogy where we knew where the first series was going. We didn't know where this one was going and we got a resolution that I felt delivered on every single facet. So is Of Blood and Bone better than The Faithful The Faithful and the Fallen? I don't think either one's better. I do think the writing is actually uh, improved in Of Blood and Bone. I already thought it was pretty damn good, uh, Valor through Wrath. Malice had a couple ro uh, rocky points, but it was still really good. And then from Valor on, it's just 150 miles an hour, you know, of just awesomeness. Uh, of Blood and Bone continues that. I think John got better even in each book in this series. Like, A Time of Courage is his best book for sure. As a total, I don't necessarily think one's better than the other, if I'm being honest. And that's what I love about The Banished Lands. It all goes well, so well together. And it's a seven-book series that where everything seems so bad and so awful, but you find a reason to fight. You find hope in these characters, and these characters find people that are worth loving. And when everything seems at its darkest, they find a reason to keep going on and to do the right thing. They fight for honor and for what's right. And for truth... And courage. I get fired up about this series. I can't help it. I love John Wynn's writing. I love The Banished Lands. And I am so happy to have read it, but I'm so sad that it's over. But John Wynn does have a new series coming out. And I believe I might be getting an advanced copy of that. So I will be reviewing that here on the channel. We might be done with The Banished Lands, but damn it, we're not done with John Gwynn. And I think he's only going to get better. I mean, he's writing Norse-inspired fantasy in this new series. And I can't wait. So yeah, I mean, Up and Bone, six stars out of five. I loved it. If you didn't, I'm sorry, but this, uh, as a completed series, when I look at the Banished Lands saga, so the quartet and the trilogy all together, and I'm saying this today, and this might not always be the case, but as of today, for a finished series, because if you include unfinished, there's a lot of heavy hitters in there, but as today, with a finished, completed series and a saga, I think the Banished Lands saga, all seven books, is my favorite completed piece of fantasy. I mean that, and again, it might change in the future, but as of today, uh, it is my favorite finished fantasy. Hey, and my battery's dying, so if you like this, hit like and subscribe. There's going to be more John Gwynn on the channel, so make sure if you want to see that, to hit subscribe and turn on the bell notification. And until I see you next time, be good, be safe, and always remember to keep turning the page. Truth and courage! Thank you.